a white stomach, and a white head with a really thick uh, stripe across its eye, a brown stripe across its eye. And what they will do is they'll circle high in the sky until they see a uh, fish, and they'll dive down, and right before they hit the water, their claws will come out and grab the fish. So they catch fish that are on the, close to the surface of the water. There's a question that we get asked a lot, is it an eagle or is it a hawk? It's actually a fish hawk, which is its own classification. So if you see him up in the sky, keep an eye on him. You might be able to catch him uh, catching a fish, which is kind of cool. I've seen it several times. The second bird I'm talking about today is the night herring. And it's called the night herring because it hunts at night. The night herring is about two feet tall with a four foot wingspan. And it's got a real thick, uh, broad neck. The mature night herring has a brown back with a uh, whitish stomach. And it has on the back of its head like a whip looking thing. If you want to see them, you want to come out at night. And I've seen a bunch of them at Pioneer Park. And they stalk around on the shore, uh, right on the edge of the water, looking for a uh, small fish that will come up to the surface. And they'll strike real quick. Night herrings are opportunist eaters. So they'll eat anything from fish to eggs to lizards, anything that gets near them. But they do like their fish diet. And that's where you'll usually see them is right on the edge of the water. The third fish I'm going to talk about today is another herring. It's called a blue herring or a great blue herring. And the blue herrings are up to four and a half feet tall with about a six and a half foot wingspan. So that's a pretty big bird and you're gonna notice them real easily because they're probably the biggest bird at the lake. They have real long slender necks and what they do to hunt is they'll stand on the water edge or in the water and not move, they'll be completely still. And if a fish comes by, they'll use their long net to jet into the water and snag their prey. You can also see them out in fields where they're hunting down lizards and gophers and other things but they do like their fish diet and that's what their main food source is. The fourth bird I'm talking about today is the cormorant. And the cormorants stand between two to three feet tall with a four foot wingspan. And the easiest way to spot a cormorant is you'll see them on the shoreline with their wings spread out. That's because the cormorant's unique and they're actually not waterproof like other birds. So they have to, after each time they go in the water, they have to get out and they have to dry off. And when you see them in the water, they actually uh, float real heavy. So you'll only see their neck and their head sticking out. And then they got the big beak on them that's about the same size as their head with a hook at the end. And what they'll do is they'll jump in the water and they use their feet to propel themselves through the water very quickly and they'll attach themselves with their beak to a fish and that's how they get their prey. And the cormorants you'll see out here are the double crested cormorants and they're basically black and brown and then they'll have a real uh, bright orange on their cheeks. But most times you're not going to see that so just look for the long sleek black bird and if he's got his wings out in the sun, that's your, most likely gonna be your cormorant. I think the best part of fishing is getting away, getting outdoors, enjoying the environment, enjoying nature, maybe make a memory of catching a fish. But even if you don't catch a fish, it's just a nice way to spend an afternoon. Peoria partnered with Game and Fish to uh, do a community fishing program to bring fishing into the city so people don't have to go searching out waters and they can just come right here in their own backyard, catch a memory or catch a fish. So right now we have two urban fishing lakes. We have Pioneer Lake and then we have Rio Vista Pond right here. The Game of Fish stocks these bodies of water about every other week during fall, spring, and uh, winter time. During the warmer months, they do the catfish, and during the colder months, we do trout. And then one time in spring, they'll stock it with uh, bluegill and bass. I personally think the morning and the evening are the best times to fish. It's, they tend to get more active. So if you do want to come out, maybe after work, spend an hour or two out here, or if you're an early riser like I am, maybe come out before work and cast out a line and enjoy it. They do have to have a fishing license. Anyone that's 10 years or older must have one on them. You can catch a release or you can keep it. Fish is obviously a good source of nutrition, so if you want to eat a fish, I, I suggest it, I enjoy them. If you're a first-time fisherman and you want to learn more about how to catch a fish, June 6th, I'll be hosting a fishing seminar that'll go over the basics of uh, casting, what type of base to use, what time of day to fish. Really kind of take the mystery out of it, and that way you're a little more comfortable to go out and uh, maybe make a memory catching a fish.
Thanks for tuning in to the latest version of our podcast. We'll see you next time. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Thanks for stopping in. As you can see, we got a brand new podcast studio over here at the main library. The cool thing is this podcast studio is free. You can come on in, make a reservation. All you have to do is do a short training video and you can sit where I'm sitting and take advantage of all the wonderful equipment that we have here. You can start your own business, become a superstar. Who knows? The sky is the limit. But it's all here for you and it's all free over here at the main library down in downtown Peoria. Keep tuning in. We'll have more information on our social media platforms and always check our library's website because there's going to be more information coming out. Our podcast studio launches in August and we're looking forward to seeing you all here. We'll see you next time. Hello and welcome to the City of Peoria Planning and Zoning Commission. The Planning and Zoning Commission is composed of volunteer citizens appointed by the City Council. The Commission is the designated hearing body for a range of land use applications, including general plan amendments, rezones, conditional use permits, and amendments to the Zoning Code. Upon recommendation by the Commission, general plan amendments, rezones, and Zoning Code amendments proceed forward to the Peoria City Council for final action. For conditional use permits, the Commission will make a final decision subject to appeal. All hearings are conducted in accordance with the rules for procedure requirements to allow an impartial and efficient hearing, and all Commission meetings are open to the public under the Arizona Open Meeting Law. Each case will be called in the order in which it appears on the agenda unless otherwise announced during the meeting. Once called, city staff will give a presentation of the case, followed by a presentation from the applicant if they so desire. After the applicant's presentation, members of the public who have submitted a speaker's request form will be called to speak by the commission chair. The applicant may be called to provide additional information, clarification, or a rebuttal. The commission will discuss the case, may ask additional questions, and take action. Any member of the public wishing to speak must complete a speaker's request form and hand it to the planning assistant at the end of the dais. When speaking, please limit your comments to a maximum of three minutes and try not to repeat statements already made by others. We welcome your comments and as fellow citizens of Peoria, we thank you in advance for your participation. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to the regular meeting of the Peoria Planning and Zoning Commission on March 2nd, 2023. Uh, let's like to start out with a simple roll call. Um, Vice Chair Jeff Nelson. Present. Secretary Josephine Waitman. Present. Commissioner Sean Hutchinson. Present. Commissioner Clay Alsop is absent. Uh, our newest member, welcome, Commissioner Leila Villasenor. Present. Thank you. And Commissioner Robin Updegraff is absent. Um, thank you so much. I'd like to make a final call for any speaker request forms from the public. I don't have any, so we'll move on to uh, the first item on the agenda, the consent agenda. Item 1C, the minutes from the prior meeting. Uh, discussion and possible action to approve the minutes from the February 2nd, 2023 meeting um anyone have any comments or uh yeah chair can i make a, a i think we need to make a correction to the minutes um uh, the current titles of the members of chair and vice chair need to be corrected i believe we were in our new roles in that at that meeting yeah. Th thank you vice chair um for the record that was corrected in the um minutes that i approved and signed and signed off on so we should be in good shape there so terrific any other commissioners have any questions comments concerns do i have a motion
Commissioner Waitman, I move um, that we approve the uh, meeting minutes as is if no corrections are necessary. Second. Commissioners, please vote. And the motion passes unanimously, thank you. Um, we'll go to the regular agenda. Um, the applicant uh, for items 2R and 3R has requested a uh, continuance to a date certain of the Planning and Zoning Commission for April 20th, 2023. Any commissioners have any comments or can we have a motion? Can I have a motion, please? Vice um, Chair, Chair. Yeah. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, yeah, Chairman, I move that we continue uh, items GPA 22-03. Uh, I apologize, just for clarification, do we have to make two separate motions for each of these or can we do it in one? Okay, two separate, two separate. thank okay. you. All right, so um, my motion, uh, let me revise that to say we uh, recommend we continue item GPA 2203 to the April 20th, 2023 meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Seeing first and a second. Commissioners, please vote. And the motion also passes unanimously. Can I have a motion on three R's request for continuance? Commissioner Waitman. Um, I move that we continue um, KZ 22-08 to the April 20th, 2023 meeting. Thank you. Second. Second. Commissioners, please vote. And that also passes unanimously. Thank you all. Um, let's move to new business. Item. 4R is a study session, zoning ordinance, administrative refinements. Staff, take it away. <laughs> Chair, members of the commission, um, I am back before you this evening on something the planning uh, staff is incredibly excited about. I'm sure only planning staff is excited about this one, but it is a necessary item. So since we are entering uh, March and it is time for spring cleaning, hence we are before you this evening for a study session item for zoning ordinance administrative refinements. What does that mean? So it, it, there is an up, upcoming city initiated code amendment for chapter 21, all sections of chapter 21 known as the zoning ordinance because why not go big or go home? So we're touching every section within the zoning ordinance itself on this particular one. By way of background, uh, the impetus for this, the general plan's goals and policies require regular review of our implementation tools, our regulations and policies. The zoning ordinance is one, we've already touched the community design guidelines, our des d previous design review manual got updated. You've seen uh, the sustainability plan, the arts, plan in front. Those are the implementation tools of the general plan. So if you think back in your minds, we've often used that mothership graphic. It's all tied back into the general plan. And in particular, the expectation is as the city grows and matures, we're going to maintain uh, contemporary regulations. We're going to be forward thinking. We're going to be innovative. So where we need to make adjustments, we do so. Um, don't be stuck be resilient and adaptive. So what started off a couple years ago as some simple wordsmithing changes became bigger. And the reason why we kind of took that pause on the housekeeping side of things was, if you will recall, we had the, the food truck uh, amendment coming forward. We've had the marijuana uh, amendment coming forward. We've had a number of miscellaneous text amendments coming ahead of time. So why do a cleanup, kind of let the dust settle, and then we'll, we'll see where we're at on things, and then restart the cleanup. So when we did that, looking ahead at our future items coming in front of commission, we have some larger items, text amendments coming in front of you. The parking code update, 
the landscaping phase two update. So when we look at the structural integrity of the zoning ordinance itself, it's not laid out very well. So not only are we addressing text inconsistencies and duplications, we're structurally reformatting the code. So it's number one, it's easier to read. And number two, when we get into those bigger sections, we can put the code, the new code, the new provisions in a format that's also easier to read. For example, when I show you the parking code, right now there are only four sections. So when you have big long tables and text, it just gets indented and dented and dented and dented until it's no longer usable for our, the consultants to read, for us to manage and administer, for our mom and pops to understand. So we're restructuring the layout and the table of contents so things are just easier to navigate going forward. Now, when we are doing that, that means when I bring forward this text in front of you and you start looking at these changes, it's over 500 plus pages of edits because there's some big shifting going around. And a lot of it is just shifting of, of text from one place to the other. And other bits and pieces are some cleanup efforts along the way. So for tonight's discussion, I'm gonna walk you through some high level conversation of what we're going to do and then show you in the table of contents so you can start to understand it. And then we'll talk about next steps because this is simply an introduction and for those who are going to be at home, there is going to be a public comment period on these changes coming forward. So we're gonna talk about that. But let's start with what we're trying to do. This is the first three sections of the zoning ordinance and they're going to be called administrative administration, definitions, and general provisions. So first and foremost of this cleanup effort started off with when we are administering the code, you wanna have those breadcrumbs and consistency of terms. So by state law, the person or individual enforcing the ordinance is called a zoning administrator. That is in state code. When we refer to it in our current ordinance, we will use interchangeably the director, planning manager, department, etc. It gets challenging when we're writing interpretations or how we're enforcing those regulations if there's inconsistency in our terminology. So the city manager will designate the person, and it's usually a planning director as the zoning administrator. Chris's title has changed over the years. The department's title has changed over the years. So a very simple thing is we're gonna call the person who's, who's interpreting the code the zoning administrator. The names can change, but the, but the title is the same, zoning administrator. Now the zoning administrator, he's a person of one. We're a department of 14, he doesn't do it all. He does a lot, but he doesn't do it all. So he will often delegate those responsibilities for enforcement of those provisions, and we are his designees. And so you establish kind of that chain of authority within the zoning ordinance, so you create that clear, um, to say to an applicant, yes, we have the authority through the city manager, through state law, through the city manager, through Chris as the zoning administrator, down to whoever is, is reviewing the, as a staff member. Yes, we have the authority, to make this call. So it is simply an, an administrative technicality, if you will. So that's probably overly boring. That's, that's, um, but it's, it's an important one for the enforcement of what we do on a day in and day out basis. The other is a consolidation. We actually have administration provisions in section 100 and 300. There are three different provisions that say how the administrator goes about enforcing it. I don't think we need three to say that the same thing. One is good, so we're gonna consolidate it into one and done, one spot, and you can see as you're reading the code. We're also going to be adding, clarifying, and changing some key definitions that have been problematic in certain areas uh, within the code so that they're more uniform and people can understand. For instance, uh, the corner setback. Um, the planning manager, that shouldn't be a definition, it's gonna be taken out. 
the zoning administrator should be a definition and is going to be included. And then finally, we're going to move the miscellaneous and supplemental provisions in section 800 into a new section of 300. You'll see why. When you think about it,
the Mayor and City Council welcome you to the Peoria City Council meeting. As a courtesy to others, please silence all phones. If you would like to address an issue that is on the agenda, or if you would like to speak to the Council regarding a non-agenda item, please complete a speaker request form, which can be found in the front lobby of the Peoria City Council Chambers or in the tray to the left of the speaker's podium. Please place the completed speaker request form in the second tray to the left of the speaker's podium labeled Request to Speak. All speakers will have three minutes to complete their comments. A countdown clock is easily visible on the left side of the wall behind the City Council dais. Only items listed on the agenda may be addressed by the Council. Since items presented as part of a speaker's request have not been listed on the agenda and due to the requirements of open meeting laws, the Council will be unable to respond to items presented as part of the speaker's request. However, please be aware that your comments will be noted. The speaker's name will be called to speak at the appropriate time in the order that the forms were received. Thank you for your interest and participation in the Peoria City Council meeting. Good evening and welcome to Peoria City Council meeting of June 27th. The meeting will now come to order. Uh, please stand for the invocation by Anai and Anika Navigay of Hindu SS, uh, HSS uh, and then remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Uh, hello. All right. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Anay Navagre. And my name is Anika. Today we will be reciting two Sanskrit verses. Om Savano uh, Om, Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashantu Makashidu Kapagbane Om Shanti 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 Hi the meaning of this Sanskrit verse is, may all sentient beings be at peace, may no one suffer from illness, may everyone see the path of righteousness, and may peace prevail. Thank you. Om Sahana Vavatu, Sahano Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karvavahai, Tejas Vinavadi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai, Om Shanti 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 Hi. The meaning of this verse is, Om, may he protect us together. May he nourish us together. May, may we work together with great energy and vigor. May our intellect be sharpened. And let there be no animosity between us. Thank you. Thank you. Will the clerk please call the roll? Mayor Beth. Present. Vice Mayor Dunn. Here. Councilmember Patena. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Edwards. Here. Councilmember Crawford. Here. And Councilmember Schaefer. Present. Thank you. Uh, this will be the final call to submit speaker request forms. Uh, if you wish to address the council, uh, please please complete a speaker request form and return it to the city clerk. Uh, at this point, we will uh, have a presentation for the Peoria Leadership, graduation, uh, Peoria Leadership Institute graduation presentation certificates by Mary Lou Loya. Oh, you were over there a second ago. <laughs> Switch spots on me. <laughs> okay, Ron Pollen. Sandy Teal. <laughs> Kelly Madrid. <laughs> Tammy Burgess. <laughs> Jason Brown.
JJ McCarthy. Otto Urbic. Thank you. Josephine Waitman Powell. Thank you. Joseph Allen. Todd Voss. <laughs> Linda Osterley. <laughs> Angelica Martinez. Manuel Armarias. <laughs> Kevin Duran. <laughs> Michael Kruk. <laughs> and Gail Decker. One group photo. Yeah. Why don't we have everybody come back this way, and that way you can actually get the entire group. If that's okay. If you guys go this way, come back here. Sorry. Or you won't have a photo. You have a wide angle lens, but I don't know if you have that wide of an angle. <laughs> that way we can all get it. You guys can all get in here. No, no. I'm, I'm new to this actually. I'm just trying to. Do, <laughs> do you want us to stand up? Why don't you stand up then, and that way you can still be in. Everybody there? You want to scoot back a little bit? Let everybody get settled for a second. Okay. We will now move on the consent agenda. Uh, having received no request for removal, uh, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. That was fast. All right. Please vote. Vice Mayor Dunn? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Measure moves uh, seven zero, well, six zero, right? With uh, Councilmember Finn being gone. So, six zero. Uh, next. So, regular agenda. Moving on to new business, I now recognize uh, City Manager Mr. Henry Darwin uh, and staff for their reports. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, Chief Art Millo Miller will present a budget amendment proposal for your consideration. Um, the, 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 communications department within the, police de the communications department within the police department is a vital piece of providing public safety to our community, and this proposal will enhance the department's technological capabilities, enable them to better and safer um, and faster um, in their delivery of emergency services. Um, Chief. 
Thank you, uh, Mr. Secretary Manager, Mayor and Council. Thank you very much for having me here, here tonight to talk about a great program we're going to hopefully be involved in after your approval. So we are asking for uh, consideration for a 911 call handling equipment and professional services. Uh, we were currently involved with, um, well, I'll just start from the beginning here. The Peoria Police Department communication staff will move with a rela from a relationship from MR 911, which was Maricopa Regional 911, to AT&T. A five-year contract with AT&T will be administered for managed services for our PSAP, or our public safety answering point. And that would include the maintenance of the program and the operation of the program. The managed, the managed services solution provided the PD with an added benefit of more tools at the disposal of our 911 operators. It, um, it up to, it's up-to-date technology, off-site maintenance and support in real time, and next generation 911. Next Generation 911 provides citizens with a capability to send photo, video, photos, video, and text to 911. This allows the police department dispatchers to utilize the real-time data to quickly send help to our citizens. A budget amendment is requested for $1,132,985.30. And um, this uh, this fully funded this is fully funded will be fully funded by the Arizona 911 grant program. And at this point, if you have any questions, I I can answer. Them. Thank you. Any questions? Anyone on the screen? Councilor Dunn, Councilor Schaefer, any questions at all? No questions. Thanks, no. questions. Uh, do you, could you give a little bit of background um, to citizens of kind of why we're making the switch? Sure. We were involved with, uh, well, we're currently involved with uh, MR911, which is Maricopa Regional 911. Um, it's, they both report to the state, and uh, we feel that the services provided by uh, the AT&T system will give us greater updates, faster, faster uh, re replacement of equipment, and uh, different programs that we have. Um, it, um, it, it allows us to have callback to uh, drop calls from, from our citizens. Uh, it has a great uh, map, map feature uh, on it that we can quickly go to it and then actually show it on, on a video or on the officer screen in their car. Um, and then the future use will be able to implement our, our laptops and mobile, mobile equipment to that system. We currently don't have this that ability. I think there was one. I think there was, now. I think there was one feature that was mentioned that that possible citizens being able to use their actual cell phone video and things like that. Right. As well, right? So uh, citizens can uh, they, they can text directly to us. We can uh, they can use cell phones. They can if they're if they're on scene of a of a traffic accident, a crime, or something suspicious, they can actually video what's going on and send it directly to our 911 center. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Anything from either of you? Good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so thank you for the report. Uh, do I have a motion on 19R? So moved. Second. Second. Please vote. Vice Mayor Dunn. Yes. Council Member Schaefer. Yay. And again, it passes 6-0. Uh, uh, thank you, Chief. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. Appreciate it. Uh, Mayor and Council, uh, the next agenda item 20R is a, for a contract capital improvement projects, pavement, pa pavement management program, rehabilitation and pavement preservation, crosswinds and for crosswinds and Steeple Hill. Uh, Rhonda Humbles, our acting public works director, is going to present a contract for the Council's review and possible approval. This contract will address an area of the city identified as in need of pavement rehabilitation and advances the goals within the city's pavement management program. Rhonda. Thank you, Mr. Darwin. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Also presenting with me tonight is Kurt Muehlmeyer, Muehlmeyer, the Street Operations Manager. As part of the city's management, pavement management program, and for your consideration, we are seeking expenditure authority for two separate projects, which do exceed the $1 million city threshold, which is why we are here. Each agenda item consists of two neighborhoods located in the Pella Verde district with roads in need of rehabilitation due to their structural degradation. 
Road quality is measured and assigned a pavement condition index rating or PCI, which Kurt will cover in a moment to show why these neighborhoods were selected. If approved tonight, the Streets Division has selected a contractor from the city's job order contract list, which is created from contracts, contractors that have followed the JOC competitive bid process. We are combining both agenda items, 20 and 21R, into a single presentation. However, they will need a separate vote upon conclusion of the presentation. With that, I will turn it over to Mr. Muehlmeyer. Thank you, Ms. Humbles, and uh, good evening, Mr. Darwin, Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. Um, as Ms. Humbles mentioned, uh, items 20 and 21R are for proposed street rehabilitation of four neighborhoods within the city, uh, the Crosswinds, Steeple Hill, Ridgemere, and Finisterre West two communities. Uh, starting off with item 20R, uh, the proposed contract for street rehabilitation in the Crosswinds and Steeple Hill neighborhoods. So these neighborhoods are generally located between 75th and 79th Avenues from Alexandria Way to Thunderbird Road. Uh, the community is comprised of 15 different street segments totaling 1.9 linear miles or 4.9 lane miles. Uh, these two neighborhoods were both constructed uh, in 1995. Uh, the pavement is now 28 years old in these neighborhoods and showing signs of deterioration, including wide cracking, oxidation, um, as is demonstrated by the, the image there. Uh, the average PCI in these neighborhoods is approximately 46.8, uh, which is significantly lower than the city's overall PCI average of 77. Uh, our pavement management program has recommended these areas to receive a mill, which is essentially to remove a portion of the existing asphalt, and overlay, which then replaces uh, what we removed with a new layer of hot mix asphalt. Uh, this rehabilitation has been determined to be the most cost-effective treatment based on the current pavement condition, uh, and the recommended contractor, Via Sun Corporation, has successfully completed similar projects in Peoria. Uh, the proposed total cost for this project is $1,780,000. $718. Moving on to item 21R at this point. Uh, this would be for the Ridgemere and Finisterre West 2 neighborhoods. Uh, similarly to item 20R um, is for a proposed street re rehabilitation of these two neighborhoods. Uh, these neighborhoods are located between 75th and 79th Avenues between Sweetwater and Alexandria Way. Uh, this area is comprised of 13 street segments, 2.2 linear miles of pavement, and 5.9 lane miles. Both of these areas were originally constructed in 1986, so 10 years older than uh, the, the locations uh, in 20R. Uh, this pavement is now 37 years old and showing significant signs of deterioration, including widespread cracking, which is uh, very noticeable in the image in the presentation. Uh, and when you compare it to the, the, the picture from um, item 20R, uh, it's very noticeable, the, the deterioration in this one. Um, so the average PCI for this area is approximately 35, so much lower, 10 points lower than the other neighborhoods, um, Crosswinds and Steeple Hill, and again, significantly lower than the city's overall PCI average of 77. Uh, just like the previous item, our payment management program also recommended these areas to receive a mill and overlay. Uh, this process has also been determined to be the most cost effective based on current payment conditions. Uh, the total proposed cost for this project is $2,190,653. Uh, just to summarize with the recommendations, so recommendation for item 20R is that council award a contract in the amount of $1,780,718 to Viasun Corporation for the rehabilitation and maintenance of the Crosswinds and Steeple Hill communities. And similarly, our recommendation for 21R is that council award a contract in the amount of $2,190,653 to the Viasun Corporation for the rehabilitation and maintenance of the Ridgemere and Finisterre West uh, communities. So this concludes the presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that council may have. Any questions at all? Do I have a motion on uh, to adopt 20R? So moved. <laughs> Do I, I have a second, obviously. Please vote. Vice Mayor Dunn? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Yes, on 20R. So it passes 6-0. Uh, um, do I have a motion on 21R? Move to approve 21R. Do I have a second? 
I have a second. Please vote. Vice Mayor Dunn. Two are so competitive. Yes. Council Member Schaefer. Yes, on 21R. All right. Both motions have approved. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And also, thanks for doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. It makes a big difference. So we a lot of, uh, I think all of us get a lot of great responses on our streets. So thank you. Mayor, the, ne the next item on the agenda is item 22R for contract amendments for MGC contractors incorporated for the Beardsley Water Reclamation Facility Expansion. Uh, Kate Powers will now present a contract amendment, this contract amendment, I'm sorry, for your review. This is part of the CIP-funded Beardsley Water Reclamation Facility Expansion Project. Take it away, Kate. Uh, thank you, Mr. Darwin. Good evening, Mayor and Council. As uh, Mr. Darwin said, item 22R concerns contract amendments for MGC contractors who are currently uh, doing work on the Beardsley Water Reclamation Expansion Project. So the intent of this project is to increase the treatment capacity from about 4 million gallons a day up to 6 million gallons a day. This is a multi-phased project and thus a multi-award project, and we've actually been to council four times previously for awards of various uh, components and phases. So here we are with amendment uh, four. Of course, the Beardsley Water Reclamation Facility provides treatment for a significant portion of our community, as well as some areas that have been designated for growth in what we call the Beardsley Zone, as you can see there on the right-hand side of the slide. The contract amendments uh, at this phase is a little over $10 million, and they cover a broad range of things inside the plant. It's sort of the last time we'll come see you on this project, and so it picks up all the loose pieces, uh, as well as some final engineering and final construction projects. So there's some headworks improvements, uh, something called a sludge densification system. That's lovely sounding, but necessary. Completion of an awful lot of electrical and instrumentation. Uh, it's the installation. We've pre-ordered an awful lot of those parts, and so they're on their way, but we need uh, some budget to get them installed. Site paving and drainage, engineering services, and general conditions. There's also about $700,000 of that $10 million is just contingency items in case something comes up. From a schedule perspective, uh, the reclaimed water pump station portion of this project will be completed in July of 2024. So you might recall we're currently constructing reclaimed water lines that run from the facility to the north. And one of the components of this project is to install the pump station to push that water into that system. We expect total project completion in December of 2024. There's a few pictures here of uh, some of the progress. Uh, the picture on the upper left is actually a filter treatment bay that's been newly installed. On the right-hand side is a piece of a UV trench. We in install UV lights that disinfects the water as it flows through, obviously under construction. And the lower left-hand side is that pump station I talked about that's going to push water into the reclaimed water system as well as into the underground infiltration system that's in the, the Beardsley site. And if you look in that picture on the lower right, you can see some tan motors. They're kind of sitting vertically, sitting on top of some black pipes. So this is a case where we're able to get the motors, but we don't yet have the controllers or any way to power them or run them. And so that's the kind of electrical components that have been delayed and that we're waiting to arrive. And that's what pushes the schedule out to what, where it is here. So Mayor and Council, uh, staff recommendation is to approve the contract amendment number four with MGC contractors as shown on the slide. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. Any questions at all? Uh, do I have a motion to adopt uh, 22R? I'll motion. Do I have a second? Second. Please vote. Vice Mayor Dunn? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Yes. And motion has moved 6 0. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Mayor, the next item on the agenda is item uh, 23R. We're making sure the chief gets his steps in tonight by calling him back down here. I need him. Uh, that's right. <laughs> uh, so uh, he's going to give us a presentation on the next item uh, for your approval. And this is a contract to purchase a much needed replacement for our police command, uh, policeman command vehicle. So chief, take it away. Good evening again, mayor and council. Um, 
So just a little background on this. We had a, um, a command vehicle in our possession for like 20 years, and it quite frankly looked like it belonged in the salvage yard 10 years ago. Um, it was uh, very undependable. We ended up having to use uh, our neighboring uh, agencies for command vehicles. And if you could just imagine uh, investigating a crime out in the heat of the desert with no place to go for shade or comfort or to do the investigation, uh, it was very, very difficult. So about a year and a half ago, uh, our department, we made a request for uh, a command vehicle. Um, the vehicles you see up here, it wouldn't be uh, packaged like that uh, in terms of the, uh, the decals and whatnot. It would be all Peoria-centric. Um, and you just uh, imagine that vehicle, what it, what it might look like with uh, Peoria, City of Peoria Police Department uh, logos on it. So um, as part of the fleet reserve fund and the city's budget process, the police department has determined that the police command vehicle is in need of replacement. Uh, staff is recommending that uh, we purchase this vehicle. Um, so the, bud the budget supplement was submitted in fiscal year uh, 2023 to fund the replacement. But due to rising costs of materials and delays, uh, the budget shortfall occurred and the supplemental for additional expenditure authority was submitted for fiscal year 2024. The amount needed to purchase the replacement vehicle is $1,552,649. The proposed contract price is valid through July 17, 2023. Uh, it is anticipated that the manufacturer will increase uh, the prices after that date, and um, he, has done, he has done so a couple times already, and again, it, I'm sure it's for reasons uh, out of his control as well. Uh, Arizona State Senate Bill uh, 1720, I'm sorry, 1702 was approved uh, with $1.5 million funding for the city of Peoria to purchase a command vehicle. The state funds will be used to place uh, the previously, I'm sorry, to replace the previously approved uh, fiscal year 2024 budget. And I do wanna um, uh, kind of single you out, Mayor, on this one. Uh, you went above and beyond uh, what we were expecting in terms of support going to the state and getting the, um, the necessary funding for this. So uh, that allows us to uh, move forward with this, I hope, with a, with a vote here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Any questions? Any questions? Thank you Mayor. Uh, Chief, could you explain to uh, this council and our viewing audience, uh, what type of equipment is equipped in this in this van that will help with investigations? So, it, um, first of all, the van is uh, it has pop outs, so it gets um, a lot more square footage within within the uh, within the the vehicle. Uh, it, it allows an area for um, you, you can put maps out. You can sit down and uh, uh, write out a report on a computer. Um, it has uh, air conditioning, which is a, which is huge. Um, it has. Uh, very, very, we're going to supply it with various storage, uh, I'm sorry, various items that we need to do investigations, um, whether it be crime scene tape or cameras or whatever, whatever an investigation might entail, we're going to make sure that that is properly, properly supplied. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions, sir? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, so with that, uh, do I have a motion to adopt 23R? Call motion. Please vote. Vice Mayor Dunn? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Yes. And with that, the uh, motion has uh, moved 6 0. Uh, thank you, Chief. Appreciate thank it. you. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Mayor and Council, the next item on the agenda is 24R, um, and in alignment with the Council goals for public safety and the budget authority extended by Council for this, for this fiscal year, uh, the Chief is going to present an IGA amendment, an intergovernment agreement amendment for your approval, authorizing the continuation of an agreement to provide four school resource officers, or SROs, for PUSD's high schools, and a new provision to provide four additional officers as SROs to support the elementary school districts, I'm sorry, the elementary schools in the district. Chief. Good. Thank you very much. Uh, this is another windfall for our police department, and again, it goes right in line with uh, Mayor and Council's public safety plan as well as the police department's public safety plan, and that is to create environments in Peoria that are safe for all of our publics for all of our, uh, all of our citizens, uh, from, the, from the ground level up from elementary schools all the way up. 
Um, we are fortunate uh, to get approved for 13 additional bodies um, um, during, during this budget, which we'll start hiring, we're in the hiring process for uh, July 1st. But in addition to that, uh, in conversation with the mayor, uh, there, was a good, there was a good reason to have additional SROs or SLOs. And I'm, I'm gonna explain the difference in a moment. Uh, but then again, a mayor, council, I'm, I'm gonna give the, the mayor credit on this one, um, going behind the scenes, doing all the things that he needs to do to represent our city on the state level to help accomplish getting uh, some grant funding for this. So thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, before I get started, I do have three of our SROs. I asked them to be here today to not only hear what this presentation is, but to also validate their importance in our community and how much we value them and the, the, um, um, the force multiplier they're going to, um, that's gonna, the force multiplier that they create. So if you don't mind standing up, gentlemen. Thank you very much um, for indulging me with that. Um, so the Peoria School District and the City of Peoria's SL, SRO and SLO program. First of all, an SRO is an officer that's a school resource officer that's assigned to a specific school. The SLOs are exactly like uh, an SRO in that they are school liaison officers. And because there are 22 schools that they're, we're gonna divide amongst four officers, that's why they're called liaison officers. They get the exact same training that an SRO gets. They're, they're required, um, all the certifications that an SRO gets, including the, uh, the training they have to get to, uh, to teach, to counsel, and to be on board with, uh, with the students. Uh, throughout the nation, including Peoria, SROs are a valuable uh, commodity within any city. So the school resource officers and the SLOs uh, provide an important level of service for our schools, the community, and the patrol officers on the street. This program will continue the cooperative efforts by the City of Peoria Police Department and the Unified School District, Peoria Unified School District. This IGA, this will uh, be the 14th consecutive year that the school resource, officer have, school resource officers have been assigned to Peoria, Peoria Unified School District on campuses with Sunrise Mountain, Cent Centennial, Liberty, and Peoria High Schools. The new IGA includes the addition of four su uh, school liaison officers assigned to the Peoria School District uh, to the elementary school campuses. The IGA was updated to, schedule, to include four additional uh, SLOs for a total of eight officers four SROs and four SLOs. The Peoria Unified School District in partnership with the city, they increased the contributions in each officer's salary to be 60,000 of the total amount of an officer's um, yearly salary. Plus an additional $10,000 for overtime costs per officer. And those overtime costs will include football games, proms and special events that are after hours. The IG will be effective through May of 2025. At this point, uh, if you have any questions, I would, I'm here to answer them. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> I, I'm, I also want to thank the mayor. He's been uh, kind of the driving force behind this, and I, I couldn't agree more with him. I've been just, in this capacity, I get to travel and see a lot of schools. I see schools with SRO officers. I see schools that don't have them. There's a huge difference. Uh, the ones with SRO officers, these kids don't only see them as police officers, but they see them as their friends. And it's interesting to watch, you know, how they uh, communicate with one another and the things that they do. I was recently at a school that did not have an SRO officer, and I asked the principal, would you want to have an SRO officer? And she said, we would love to, to have one. The mayor wants one in every school. I, I agree with him. I'd like to have one in every school. I just, I just feel that it makes our kids safer. Uh, it, it's got to make them more comfortable to be able to go to school knowing that there's somebody there to protect them. So I support this and, and thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Good. Um, thank you, Chief. I appreciate that. I'm going to say uh, one thing. I mean, this is one of the things, um, you, you know, when we had a shooting incident. I think it was Tennessee in Nashville whenever this uh, conversation started. And, uh, and it happened on, I believe, a Tuesday, I think it was. And, and we were getting ready to go into a council meeting, and we were actually meeting, just so everybody understands this, and I want the citizens to understand this. Uh, you know, it was uh, 
city manager, myself, and the chief were just sitting there having a conversation, and I said, you know, I really, I really want to add SROs, and the chief did not even blink, um, which I think is really, really important uh, because it's, it's, it's the fact that we're trying to take care of our kids. Our first priority as a, as a city um, and from this dais and every, every, every employee that works in this, in this city, ha I believe has the same belief, is our job is to take care of the citizenry of the city. And the safety and well-being is our first priority. Um, we talk about water, we talk about wastewater, we talk about everything else like that. You may not think as just a general public, because I was on that side for a long time, thinking that that's not the public safety, but it is. In fact, it, it's a big part of it. Um, and Cape, Cape and his entire staff lives that entire aspect of their life. In, sec, in fact, all of public work, works does uh, from that standpoint, whether it's potholes and trying to fix potholes and every aspect of the city is to try to enhance citizenry's lives. And um, I was really proud of you, Chief, that day because it was like, we need to solve this. How do we actually get, get SROs in our elementary schools and how do we you know, go one for every five? So that way the goal ideally was to have a police officer that would go as a school liaison officer, um, go from from school to school to school every other day, and that way it builds builds a relationship with kids, and also makes them feel uh, not only feel safe, but also helps with the communication and alertness of what's actually going on in our city. And um, you know, our SROs, and thank you, gentlemen. I know a couple of you guys obviously pretty well, um, and uh, it's it's a very important job that that you do because you're the, you're the first line of being able to actually, you know, have that connection with a student, um, be able to change the course. I know, I, I know the stories of a lot of stuff that you guys have done, um, whether it's, uh, you know, trying to, you know, just be a friend. Sometimes, sometimes you're, you're, the, you're the big brother and, and, or big sister, we have, we have, you know, in, in uh, Liberty's case, right? And, and I, I really appreciate the work you do, and, and Chief, really thank you for, for jumping on this. Thank so, you. Thank you. So with that, uh, I would like, uh, do I have a motion on 24 hour? No motion. Do I have a second? Second. Please vote. Vice Mayor Dunn? Yes. Council Member Schaefer? Yes. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. And motion, motion passes 6 0. Thank you. So with that, I will, uh, would like to do a uh, call to the public. Uh, the City Council is not authorized uh, by the state to discuss or take action on any, any issues. I need my glasses because I cannot read all of that. <laughs> That's, uh, ra raised by, the, by public comment until later, the later meeting. Um, so uh, next on the agenda item is call to the public. There are two speaker requests at this time. Um, I'm going to just read this out. So uh, these are I items that are not listed on the agenda. We afford this time to members of the public uh, to bring items to the attention of council. The city council is not authorized by the state to discuss or take action on any, any issue raised by the public comment until a later meeting. Uh, when you come to the podium, please state your name for the record. Um, uh, first up is Mr. Ronald Spear. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, and thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Ronald Spear, 10375 West Pontiac Drive, Peoria. The reason for me attending this meeting tonight is to make you aware of a situation that's going on on Beardsley Road with respect to some truck, truck traffic that we feel is in violation of city code number 14-76, which I've provided copies to both your office and to Councilman Edwards' office. Uh, I also uh, presented a uh, petition signed by 150 residents who are uh, in, in favor of making you aware of, of these violations, and it does affect what they consider their constitutional right of a, a right to be free and happy and, and learning uh, about some of the things that are going on with the uh, truck traffic. It was very disturbing to us. Um, this all started back right around the 1st of May when... Uh, uh, there was some uh, large traffic that was being routed on Beardsley Road between 99th and 112th Street. Uh, these uh, gross emitter trucks were servicing a project over on 83rd and Happy Valley. Uh, trucks started uh, moving into, uh, in and out of Beardsley Road at about 3.30 in the morning all the way till about 3 in the afternoon, uh, hauling aggregates, we believe, to the uh, site over on 83rd and Happy Valley. 
I had immediately asked for a meeting with both the mayor and uh, the councilman, a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, I did get a response from Administrator Terry Smith that stated that uh, they were having to put calendars together and that they were finally going to agree on a meeting on the 24th of, of uh, May. But in between that time, I, I petitioned again for a sooner, uh, earlier meeting because this traffic was just becoming horrendous. And all of the traffic was um, basically coming in and out of the aggregate and cement uh, operations on 100 and uh, west, or west of 112th Street. And this uh, basically basically became a thorough, thoroughfare driveway to all of that activity. Uh, I do have a report that was published back in February of 2011 that talked about the relief uh, road that was created, Tesma Road, that was supposed to take off of some of uh, the traffic that was being uh, conducted out of those two plants, and it was going to be a better thoroughfare for them to use, uh, very much not in a situation where they were going to be in uh, close, even close to residential areas. Um, ironically, about a week before this truck activity finally ended because the project was uh, complete, uh, we were informed that a city manager uh, or a city engineer had uh, negotiated with the developer and the truck companies to route on Tesma Road, which is what we asked for. We realized we're on a truck route, and at the same time, we believe that the activities that occur west of 112th Street should be uh, restricted to using that Tesmer spur. Tesmer was named after a gentleman that suffered from all kinds of toxic um, fumes from the trucks that were going through there. He lived in Ventana Lakes. I'm, I'm the vice president of the Ventana Lakes. I, I apologize to cut you off, sir. So, so, it's, pardon me? I apologize to cut you off. It's been three, three oh, four, okay. Three well, I just want to get my point across. I hope we can work together, and uh, I appreciate your time. I, didn't time myself. That's I guess okay. I Thank, you. So Thank you. Appreciate thanks it. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Uh, next is Kathy Frieda. Good evening, Honorable. Mayor Beck and council members, my name is Kathy Frieda. I live at 11014 West Tonto Lane. As a resident and former POA board member in Ventana Lakes, I am here to express our community thanks for working with our community. I am not one who likes to speak in public, but I will speak up when I feel something needs to be said, as any New Yorker would. <laughs> Having served on my POA board, and attended various city council meetings, I understand the importance of establishing a working relationship with our councilmen and city officials. It is not, it is not easy at times to accommodate everyone's needs, but through compromise and understanding on both sides, solutions can be found. I was dismayed and embarrassed after hearing that representatives of our community walked out of a requested meeting with city officials when they were told the mayor was not available to discuss the Beardsley Road truck route. Despite the fact that our city councilman, the engineering director, intergovernmental affairs director, the deputy city mayor, the city attorney, and the chief of staff for the mayor made time to be available to provide information about the truck route. I don't know nor do I need to know all the politics involved with the construction project and city contractual mandates, but I was given a copy of the letter that our councilman mailed to all the residents living along Beardsley Road in our community. From that, I believe the city of Peoria is doing what is legally possible to minimize the truck traffic and that impacts residents, which has been significantly reduced from a month ago. The truck route on Beardsley and later on Tesma Road, has been challenging since before I moved into Ventana Lakes. I understand that until the riverbed is free of sand and rocks, there will be very likely be trucks on Beardsley Road. On behalf of many reasonable residents of Ventana Lakes, I say thank you for working on our behalf to alleviate impacts where possible. 
Heaven only knows working with the senior community is not always an easy task, as they can be very opinionated and stubborn. As Councilman Edward knows, that as a New Yorker, he does not want to see my Brooklyn side. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> Thank you for your comments. And you did a good job actually speaking in public, so don't, don't stress it. <laughs> uh, so moving on uh, to our last item on the agenda, is, I now recognize uh, City Manager Mr. Henry Darwin. Thank you, Mayor. So July is National Parks and Recreation Month. Uh, this year's theme, Where Community Grows, celebrates the vital role parks and recreation professionals play in bringing people together, providing essential services, and fostering the growth of our communities. The Peoria Parks and Recreation Department is made up of 88 dedicated full-time employees and over 300 seasonal workers, creating an opportunity for Peoria's youngest leaders to find their passion in parks and recreation. Peoria is home to 36 neighborhood parks, and three large community parks that offer a variety of, a variety of amenities, such as a fishing, fishing lake, dog parks, multi-purpose fields, playgrounds, and public art. Sorry, no mention of pickleball in the list there, Tom. I, <laughs> my apologies to you. Um, additionally, Peoria has 35 miles of shared use pathways, 25 miles of mountain trails, and over 3,000 acres of mountain recreational open space and recreational facilities. So in honor of this month being National Parks and Recreation Month, when you see a park and recreation pro professional out in the community, please take, take some time to thank them for their hard work and dedication to growing and maintaining all that Peoria has to offer. That's all I have to report tonight, Mayor. Thank you. So the uh, next is the uh, report from the mayor. So uh, it is uh, obviously has gotten a little warm outside. You know, we thought we were going to only have 103 degree temperatures, I think, for the rest of summer and that, that today and la yesterday did not let us, let us know that it's going to change a little bit. So uh, obviously, uh, please be safe outside, look out for others. Uh, would want, really want to make sure that people uh, look at going to the All-American, Peoria All-American Festival, which is uh, the 4th of July uh, at Peoria Sports Complex. So it's an outdoor festival. Uh, starting from 5 to 10. I believe we are having a fireworks show as well. We, we are a go on that. So I, I think we have enough water in the system to be able to take care of that. So, <laughs> so uh, if you do live in Peoria or in and around Peoria, please enjoy uh, All, All American Festival. Uh, the city puts on a very, very great uh, performance there and things like that. So uh, with that, thank you for everybody's presentations today. Anybody else have anything else that they'd like to add? With that, we're adjourned. Thank you.